Hello and welcome everybody to the Overwatch Tranquility Season 3 kickoff game. Tonight we have Comets versus Vitamin C with your casters, me, Serge Spade. And me, Juco. So, going into map one, we're going to have Li Zhang Tower. And to round us out after that, before halftime, we're going to have uh, Paris. And then after halftime, we're going to have our hybrid map of Eichenwald. And then finish us off at Junkertown, unless we need a map five, which will be played on Oasis. Now, looking at these teams, we see a lot of the same vitamin C roster that we saw at the end of the preseason tournament in their Magic against Careless Pandas. The only difference that I see is Levi not starting... And in place of Levi, we have Nebi, who is a new pickup for the team. So that should be pretty exciting. Um, I was looking forward to seeing Levi. He's one of my favorite players to watch in that map. Uh, uh, map of one uh, on Nepal. Uh, and then Capital was another great player that I watched coming out of Vitamin C. So I'm glad to see them. And then for the Comets, they're not going to have their usual main tank and Captain Gilamed. Um, instead, they've put on... Uh, Idiot Freak and uh, Orca on the support line, Hush and Shortbread on DPS, and have both off tanks starting in No Shromo and Kitty Baka. Uh, how do you feel that's going to affect them coming into map one? Well, definitely having two off tank, like primarily off tank players uh, starting off uh, this series is going to be kind of rough. But given that Comets is rather flexible with the amount of players that they have on their team and the fact that they're missing a player, uh, it's it can kind of go assumed that uh, both of them were training in the main tank position to get ready for this, in knowing that they were going to be down a player. Yeah, I'd assume that they've gone through the necessary procedures to acclimate the team to not having their usual main tank. Um, otherwise, from that, I, uh, I see a very stable roster coming out of Vitamin C, but they do have the new player, Nebi, who is on the DPS role, which is a hard role to fill. Um, being You have so much impact on the team fight by getting picks, not getting picks, and the synergy has a lot to do with that. So we're going to have to see what they're capable of uh, in Game 1, but we're going to use this as a learning experience. I think both teams are very good. Uh, it should be a great map one. Uh, and they're going to use this time to feel each other out. You get to, a lot of exposure to team comps uh, on control points because of how different each part of the game is, whether you go to two maps or all three, uh, using that extra third map as a, even more knowledge to uh, gain about the other team's favorite comps, uh, all-star players to maybe focus, or uh, certain character picks that are working for you and your team. So... Uh, I hope to see Capital come out on the Lucio. I think Lucio is really strong here on uh, Li Zhang. Um, Comets might have a uh, a good wrecking ball comp here because of uh, Li Zhang Tower's uh, ease of use, I should say, for wrecking ball, and that both of them are off tank players, which of the main tanks is potentially the uh, the strongest in an off tank off tank role. So maybe it's a little bit more practiced. Um, as for the DPS line, what do you think would be most potent for both teams uh, on this map? Well, given that uh, two out of the three maps on Li Zhang Tower have very huge open spaces for not only uh, aerial crowd control when it comes to pharmacies, which I do expect both sides to at least run pharmacy at least twice, uh, but also that huge array of uh, environmental kills and the advantages that either side can utilize the map's terrain to them. I've seen multiple uh, boops from uh, Farah's push-off and from, obviously, Lucio's and <laughs> uh, Hammond kind of pushing people into the abyss, just nudging them in. Uh, that, that would essentially be where I see a lot of advantage comes from both sides of the of the spectrum was is the effect that we have a wide array of environmental kills available yes i uh, agree with that a lot i think um with the lack of levi on the side of vitamin c might hurt them on this map specifically because of their player levi uh oh. having a lot of uh prowess on the doom fists which i saw which it might be missed but i don't doubt that nebby has something that they're going to show us 
that uh, either it could be more boot play like we've been talking about, or they might have uh, a Widowmaker flex that could uh, handle a pharmacy, which could uh, kind of release the pressure valve on the rest of the team to kind of play in a more comfortable level where they're not having to worry about that constant fire mercy threat. Because once you take one of them out, as long as uh, you handle the res, um, it's kind of getting a two for one deal and all it takes is just a little bit of practice and, uh, and widow one V ones every other week to try to keep yourself at a, at a high enough level to secure those headshots, because that's really what it takes to take out such a strong duo like those two. Um, aside from that, uh, let's go back to the main tanks for a second. Uh, Surfy, uh, played really well against careless pandas. If you can, Still see that out of the the three O that happened, but I, I'd say that I was impressed with Surfy. Um, but the lack of a main tank on the Comet side, what do you think they'll do to um, adapt? Do you think they're going to play the the meta of like Goats or the solo tank Hammond, or do you think they're going to go more of a comfortable comp that could theoretically be implemented by just about any decent tank line of like Hog or Rissa or go for something even? more difficult and out of the box like dive what do you think is the likelihood of any of those options i think it would more than likely be um well it's really hard to say because with both with both uh tank players being mostly off tanks uh, i would say they would play a little uh, play it a bit safe uh, play it in characters that can self-sustain or get out of there really quick um uh, obviously, Winston's jump and bubble is one thing. Uh, if you utilize the jump's timing to your advantage, you could easily just go in, get a few tickles, and get out. But if anything, Comets are probably going to run a safe Arisa Hog composition because Hog is definitely a character that anybody, especially like even someone like me, who is a support player, right, uh, can just pick up and be able to actually put in a decent amount of work because it's just that easy to pick up and just get rolling and Arisa the same thing often more often times than not you will hear uh, Arisa hog uh, comp compositions they often say they're bored but not necessarily in a bad way because it's just that simple and that ready awesome so both teams are ready to start here um and we'll get right into map one and see if any of our predictions uh, come to fruition. I'm excited to see no, maybe uh, the duo Arisa Hog for sure. Um, after talking with Comets, they talked a lot about keeping uh, a lot of the uh, the tank lines flexible, uh, seeing as they're both off tanks. Um, but I would be interested to see if they decide to run two off tanks. I know there was a uh, in some higher level play, we've seen uh, Diva Hog be run. We've seen uh, uh, Wrecking Ball Zarya, which since Wrecking Ball is technically can be used as a main tank, I think uh, could be used here. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I think they might try to push for the main tank and it either will bite them hard or if they prepared properly, then we're going to see a surprising amount of... Uh, adaptability out of the team which will be really exciting because I, I don't want this to be map one match one three oh in favor of one team or the other i want to see what both of these teams are bringing to the season right out of the gate and get everybody excited because this is this is the show match this is where we come to see what teams are capable of within this tier most definitely and, and speaking of how you want a good back and forth we're going to see almost a mirrored composition here uh, with the exception of uh, Vitamin C running Nebi on Sombra and Comets running Hushed on May, uh, the both teams are going to opt for the Ryan Zarya to come with the classic Ryan Zarya tank lineup and push through. And here we go, getting ready and pushing on. Yeah, we have Comets hey. taking the point here. Oh, hey. and then we have a, a quick game pause. This was foreseen that uh, we might have a lever due to some connectivity issues, so. Let's hold back our criticisms for a little bit. That's often um, the case. Yeah, and we didn't, didn't give us a lot of time to talk about the map and um, the character choices on the map. So let's let's dive into that while we have a little bit of time. Um, Ryan Zarya, a good two 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 comp, but two 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 isn't enforced yet, so they don't have to do this. But I'm glad to see it. Um, the Lucio on uh, both sides, 
potentially uh, going to be able to do a lot on this point. It also gets the Reinhardt, May, Zarya uh, in position on the side of the Comets. Um, the dual Anas, obviously, to keep the tank lineup. I think that's a great call. Uh, the Doom Fists have a lot of mobility here and a lot of potential to uh, to get some kills going. Um, but really, that difference between the Somber May, I'd have to think that the Somber is going to have a little bit more impact uh, in the mid fight. But once that ult economy starts going, EMP is great. But um, I think that uh, May would have uh, more of an advantage with their ult. Definitely with the ult towards late in game uh like you said with the emp when it comes to the alt economy when it comes through uh, and they're, they're definitely gonna set up the emp for mid game just to uh, mid fight just to cut and clean sweep the entire thing ready to go uh th throughout the entire uh to just to sweep up and and clean up the fight but hushed on the, the may that's definitely going to be a uh like end fight, uh, fight deciding game, uh, alt. <laughs> yeah, we're getting everything set up here on the technical side. Sorry for the late pause. That disconnect really through everything through a tizzy. But as we get through, the countdown's going through. And here we go. We got Pardis go ahead on the Doomfist. He's going to be anti getting picked off on the side of the Idiot Freak. Maybe doing his thing, getting the hack off as everybody's fighting through on the, on the inside. Surfy's swinging around trying to keep everybody off points. Clear space for his team to get those environmental kills like we were saying. Everybody's going to be now stabilized. And, and Comet's taking fight. first control here. That That's going to be big for them coming into fight number two, having Sombra already halfway up to ult. Uh, going to be able to keep this... Um, my mistake, seeing Vitamin C actually taking the point. Um, but again, with that Sombra, getting 50% of that ult, keeping a little bit ahead of the May. And here comes the fight. Yeah, here we go. Doomfist comes in, gets off a hack off, but it's not to any avail because Sparta still helps to help Surfy get the kill on the Rhine. Both Rhines go down. Everybody's starting to get around, but on the side of Comets, they're actually going to take advantage of the fact that everything is spread out and take point for themselves. Yeah, and that's well done too. That was a very clean engagement. Not a lot of abilities used. Uh, just kept it very uh, clinical. Uh, didn't let the Sombra get too much value over there on that corner. And as we get into the second Ooh, fight, early a pick bit of a on Spartus by Orca. Oh, two picks coming on this side of Vitamin C. Yeah, definitely a uh, little bit of a sloppy engage coming in from uh, Vitamin C. And uh, Comet's not afraid to take control of that situation, drop uh, one ult into the fight, and uh, just go ahead and get a, what is it, like? 20 extra percent there on the uh, on the control tick, which is well worth the one all, especially how fast Reinhardt's probably going to get all charge here in these uh, these sloppy brawl fights that are sure to come. The huge ult advantage on the side of Surfy. He does have that shatter up, but they're going to pick off Surfy. Six man EMP comes through. Everybody's getting picked off. Hush, not able to get anything. He managed to get Blizzard off. Gets punched down on Capital on from Shortbread. Everybody's still trying to sustain. The, the fight is taking place inside this room. Shortbread's just gonna go ahead and meet his maker, knowing that he's outmatched. Meanwhile, the fight moves on to point. Everybody is trying as as Hush tries to stall for dear life. Bardis gets the kill. And there I go, eating my words. May decided to drop the ult after the EMP, but it didn't have as much of an impact. That six-person EMP really pulling in the value. But here comes the Farah on the uh, side of the Comets. And I think that's going to be a huge difference maker. They don't have a lot to handle it unless the Sombra can get into the sky. So here we go for this next team fight. Shortbread, go ahead and picking off. Grab comes in from both sides. Meteor Strike coming in. Sound Barrier on the side of Vitamin C to cover the angles. Shatter goes down, only connects to Normac. Another Shatter goes through. The team fight is going off. Spartus and Surfy making sure to clean up the kills, getting everybody off. Pardis 
popping off. Taking down majority of the team, Hello. Comet's just gonna have to reconvene. Yeah, well done by Vitamin C. What a slobber knocker of a fight to watch. And I feel like every ult in the book that was on the table was used just to keep control of that point. And kind of convincingly, too, like you said, Bardis doing a lot there for his team. And here comes the Or Orca comes last in. Uh, we're gonna see if Shortbreak can do anything from the side. Orca comes in fighting right on right. Blizzard comes in on the side of Hush, trying to control the point. Normac gets frozen, see if he gets taken down. He gets taken down by Hush. Everybody else is sustaining. Comets is making sure to keep everybody off the point. Maybe he's gonna go ahead and just run away knowing that they have the 99%. That was very clean. Didn't lose anybody in that fight from what it looks like. Oh, actually, I eat my words again. We're gonna have Moira coming back, which is a fairly mobile hero, so not too big of a loss. Uh, and here could potentially be the last chance for Vitamin C to get back yeah, on the point. You see everybody coming through. Vitamin C, by another EMP comes in, only connecting to Shortbread. Meteor Strike coming in on the side of the part is trying to connect and to keep people off the point as people were kind of sliding on and through. He gets quadruple stunned. Both teams at 99%. Nebby's just gonna go ahead and translocate, try to stall the point, let his team come through. No, no Shumu. Yes, is his coalescence to keep everybody off. And that'll be the first map of the series. Yeah, well, good retake by Comets for sure. Uh, a little bit of a, uh, a mistimed EMP, but it snuffed out the Farah ult. So in my head, I was thinking possibly that could get them back on the point, but the focus wasn't there. By vitamin C, they, they, uh, I mean, either the call out wasn't there to go focus the far and then move to a point, uh, as a team, but maybe in that overtime desperation where you, uh, you feel inclined to go to the point instead of, uh, only dedicating one mobile character to contest, uh, a lack of, uh, lack of comms or maybe a poor decision was made and that ended up losing them the map. So here we go into the second map of Lijon Tower. We see. Nebby switching off of that Sombra to go for the May. More of a consist more of a controlled uh, character pick as we go in here. Both teams trying to wait each other out. Sp Partis gets taken down with a wild charge from wide left as we have Vitamin C getting backed up into a corner while going through to try to keep everybody off. Surfy doing his best. Counter charges on Orca. Orca gets taken down by Normac, and they have the main tank advantage. I, s I said that a little too soon. Surfy gets taken down as everybody else is getting cleaned up as they're trying to make their way back to spawn. Normac's still poking ahead. Getting some ult charge for Sushi. Again, that nano up as we go into the second team fight. It seems like right it's going to this. It looks really like the through. Doomfist is a great pick for this map. Getting everybody locked into one spot, opening up a team fight for the tanks to get a lot of damage. Yep, the Pharah is keeping the ticks, the little ticks and tricks on the side. Shatter comes down to Orca, but he's too low to follow through. Hush ends up using Barrage, taking out Surfy, making way for the rest of his team to continue on to point. Meteor Strike coming in late on Comic side. More than likely just to get out. Yeah, it was used a little bit aggressively and got lucky that uh, after the sleep, there wasn't a lot of follow-up to kill that Doomfist. Uh, but, I mean, as long as you're still alive, I mean, there was value to be had. So, being able to stay alive in that team fight means you're ready for this next one. Blizzard comes through with a grab. Sound barrier going ahead to protect everybody in grab as High Noon connects to two people on the side of Vitamin C. And it's just another sweep under the rug, cleaning up the kills. Yeah, it was a very convincing fight. Not technically over yet, but there goes the Zarya as I say that. That was a very clinical take. Uh, I liked that they invested what they needed. They still have the uh, the Graviton and the Nano Boost with the, uh, the zoning High Noon really being the only big ult that was used along with Sound Barrier. And uh, here we go with the two main tanks facing off in this corridor. Let's see what's gonna happen. Surfy's had his Shatter for a while getting ready to make way for his team but orca is coming in he has shot also ready connects to capital but 
Nano Boost gets down on Surfy as he has a huge shatter, connecting four people, making way for his entire team. Grab goes out, Coalescence comes out to try to protect everybody in Grab, but gets antied by Sushi. Orca still a line alone on the point. Hard is able to take him down with just Normac on point. They're just gonna have to fall back as Comets retakes the point. Yeah, and this team fight's still going on. It's just contest after contest. Uh, doesn't really look like Comets or Vitamin C had the resources to convincingly take that fight, but just with that control, they, uh, the side of Vitamin C concedes over to Comets and is probably getting ready for their last team fight here on this point if they don't take this. We see Shortbread going straight into the back line, trying to separate everybody off. Targets at Surfy. Oh, huge high new coming on the side of Spartus. Connecting, taking half the team out. Now it's just a cleanup. Vitamin C retakes it, not allowing that 99% to reach 100. Yeah, definitely. Partis carrying a lot of these uh, team fights with that uh, that high noon usage. So uh, I definitely put a lot more uh, chips down on uh, setting him up to get a lot of big plays and getting back up to that ult. And here we go. We this, see uh, Surfy and his team pushing forward ahead, trying to keep Comets back, but they're going to be biding their time. They know they have the percentage advantage, but not for long as we reach into the 70% mark. Each side kind of waiting each other out. Shortbread going ahead and trying to knock people around. We hear the, we see the contest coming through. Shortbread goes ahead and takes out both dragons coming through. Hushed and Nebby both reconnecting to DPS on either side. Nanos on both Rhines. The pain trains are coming through. Shatter comes in with no avail. Ogre is still finding his connection on Surfy. Capital coming in with Sound Barrier to try to stall it out on Normac. Normac sending in Grab, connecting, taking Idiotic Freak. Arca and Kiribaka are in a really tight spot. Kiribaka is have only shortbread to help contest as everybody comes in, staggers through. We got Surfy coming through. Shortbread sending in his Meteor Strike, trying to take off the tanks. Connects to Normac. Surfy tries to get a charge on shortbread, but doesn't connect. Shortbread coming in. Still stalling, making time for Orca to come in. Not anywhere close to his ultimate, but still able to make space. Nebby switches off to, to a stall character on in Tracer. High New connects on Shortbread again. Spart is showing off his McCree skills. Coalescence coming through, keeping both main tanks up on either side. It is just the stall war of a century right now. They do not want to let this go to nothing. Orca still battling out with Surfy. Both supports on either side keeping their main tanks up for the swing battle. Surfy gets antied, making way. Shortbread finishing off Surfy. That is huge. Orca now has free reign. Shatters connects to Sushi. Uh, Charlie Niner. Woo! Oh my god, what just happened? At, well, from my perspective, let's break down what we saw there. Soldier was on the high ground, kind of clinching the team fight out for uh, the side of the Comets, but then no Remax switches to the Hammond and then takes down the Soldier from the high ground, goes to the point and proceeds to keep spinning until all members of the Comets were pushed off the point, and then no one was able, <laughs> no one was able to keep the contest going. So, being dubbed the Comet Nine, and uh, we'll see Map Three, which is exciting. I I'm glad to see all points here on Li Zhang. This is probably my favorite gardens. It gives you a lot of choices when it comes to your tank line, your DPS, because as long as you're able to get value, whether it be on the uh, the far side uh, or the uh, more open side, uh, you can make room for a lot of different team comps. Yep, we see both sides deciding to go for white room here. A huge anti comes in on the side of Susi. Capital able to capitalize on the kill. Everybody gets taken down. Comets, the only remaining survivors are just gonna have to fall back. Hush still poking away. Hush, buddy, you gotta make your way back. Your team's down. No, oh, no, and Hush gets picked well, off. That, that lead stagger's gonna hurt. Stagger. Definitely. Very clean uh, team fight uh, by the side of Vitamin C. Um, 
didn't lose anybody. That's always a bonus. Uh, ults are getting a little bit up there. It's the Orissa Hog, so it's a very stable comp. So uh, looks like we're going to have a switch over to Orissa Hog on the side of the Comets. And let's see as this team fight breaks out what's going to happen. Yeah, they decided to mirror the Orissa Hog for only the few pick. Oh man, no Shroomo gets taken down by Normac with the hook. Capital making sure to get that boop and the uh, follow up kill on Hush. And Vitamin C just pushing Comets back, not allowing anybody to get across that bridge. Yeah, Vitamin C has a great team comp for this bridge. I, I think you're going to have to see a different approach come out of Comets, which looks like that's exactly what they're going to do, taking that far side into White Room. Yep. Another White Room approach comes through, but Nevi gets the early kill on Orca on Lucio. High Noon comes off of Spartus, try to zone them in, try to keep them back while everybody else is still poking around getting their ults. Capital gets low and down by Shortbread. Nebby follows up, making sure to avenge his fallen comrade. He's getting a huge pulse on on Kitty Baka, while the rest of the comets is slowly dwindling down, and they're just going to have to force to fall back. That was a little bit messier of a team fight from both sides. I think the positional advantage of Vitamin C is what kept them alive there. And the great pressure by Nebby constantly being that thorn in the back of the, the bunker comp that's not going to let them focus in on these important boop kills that Vitamin C is able to get away with. Yeah, we see comments going ahead and trying to again as we reach dangerously close. No Shurumo gets taken down again. Shortbread sending in Riptire, only connecting to Normac. Blizzard comes out on the side of Hushed. Hush trying to clear the way for the point. They're desperately trying to take him down, but Surfy is not having it. Supercharger comes through. Nano McCree comes through, connecting to Idiotic Creek, getting a kill on Kitty Baka also, following through on Orca, cleaning up all the kills. And Bardis, so low on the hamster, still able to pick and clean him off. Short Braid switch over to the Tracer on the last minute, gets picked off. And that is it. Vitamin C takes Legion Tower. Yeah, and we uh, we saw it on that second map, and it stayed true for the third map. Pardis carrying his weight uh, on that roll of McCree, and a well-deserved play of the game here by Shortbread. I think I know the moment that's going to get recapped. Um, but yeah, Vitamin C just cl cleaned up their act for um, parts two and three of Li Zhang, and uh, a well-deserved first map win, and a really exciting series from both teams for sure. Um, the support play was fantastic on both sides. Uh, the tank play... Uh, especially on map three, it was very solid. Uh, the synergy between Roadhog and Orissa is a little bit more natural, so it was a little bit easier to follow what the uh, the tanks were th uh, thinking. Uh, the Reinhardt battles were definitely entertaining. They uh, <laughs> Both of them hyper-aggressive, and that's exactly what you want to see in this spectator setting. Uh, that's exactly how I play Reinhardt. Um, so I think uh, it really came down to the DPS prowess of... Uh, of Pardis and Nebby being a little bit more in sync with each other than Hushed and Shortbread. Shortbread definitely carried some weight, but I didn't uh, see a lot of moments where I could really call out Hushed for being that that star player that uh, we know that Hush can be. Hushed definitely did do a lot of in in the realm of uh, controlling with his zoning alts, uh, especially when he was on May. Uh, but is <laughs> when we talk about DPS, only thing that comes to mind is Spartus coming through with those critical high noons. Not the quintessential, you know, you're always looking for the six man high noon, which never really happens. But his high noons still definitely able to turn the tide in favor of vitamin C. In, and in that, I also want to bring up Nebby as, as, Maybe as little bit of uh, coverage that we gave to Nebby, he still made a huge difference, especially coming in as a new member from the map uh, from the game a few days ago, where it was just the six people locked into vitamin C. Nebby coming in uh, was huge for this. Yeah, definitely. Um... Nebby, a little sad to see them go onto the bench, but I think Creepy Trolls, uh, or Macy, as we know them, uh, is going to be just as good, and I'm excited to meet more people and be able to cast that. Um, 
I see a lot of changes coming out of Comets, which is even more exciting. I love the uh, the pro- the prospect of meeting more and more players in this setting. Um, I don't know really anything about the new player uh, Savior. Um, I think maybe could be the new main tank uh, in, in replacement of Orca, uh, or could be on that healing roll. Um, but now we're going to switch the maps over, which is going to be even more exciting. Do you want to uh, break down your opinions on uh, on Paris? Oh. Okay, let's just be honest here. Does <laughs> anybody really want to talk about Paris? <laughs> I, could, I could talk about Paris. You could talk about Paris all day, but one thing that I've always known noticed is that it's always it's i it, it's always polar opposites when it comes to the approach because normally defense is always that bunker composition and for offense it's trying to find a way around the bunker composition never any true compositions but for the sole purpose of getting around bunker just for that first point and as soon as they break through it usually is when there's not that much time left in the time bank and switches are made because they have the vast array of entryways in approaching point B. So that's when the changes come through. And that's where uh, attacking teams can often find themselves at an alt economy disadvantage. Yeah, I think um, of the two comps that we saw on that last part, uh, being the Arisa Hog, I'm gonna have to think that since the Rissa Hog on the side of a vitamin C was a little bit stronger, that they might have the advantage coming into Paris. But with the massive swaps that I've seen come out of Comets, maybe they specifically made a team comp and a player swap around this map. If that's the case, I'm extremely excited to see what they have in store for us. Because with this deep roster pool that they have, they're able to specifically practice for a lot of stuff. And uh, I hope they're using that to their advantage, especially with a team... Uh, like meteors kind of leading the charge in a lot of their uh, practices and uh, maybe some uh, ex- extra coaching going on from those players since they are affiliated. And if not, I mean, just a good team in general. So why not? Yeah, having that huge roster to be able to make these in-game swaps and switches is something that I touched on last game when uh, it was Careless Pandas versus Vitamin C and Vitamin C only mm-hmm. had the six players to work with one thing that i pointed out along with my caster jet the last time was that if you are stuck in a in a position where you only have six players to work with it could be really strenuous in between games because you have only this set six people and you have the set six people to work on different comps in different maps during the different switches in the meta yeah i think um Having that player pool that's able to be versatile to really any meta is always a bonus, but when it comes down to practice time, from what I've noticed being on a team myself, it gets really difficult knowing how to practice around that. Uh, So having scrim partners like potentially uh, Vitamin C have, and we know that Meteors are affiliated with the Comets, so potentially having a little bit more uh, excess practice around specific maps and metas We might see a lot of interesting play come out here, but what we're looking to see is a dive comp out of the side of the Comets, which is always exciting on this map. It can either, it's really boom or bust because uh, you can dive that initial high ground really effectively, but what matters is after you get there, being able to allocate the damage properly to the Bastion is gonna be really important. Um, Being able to get around the defense matrix shouldn't be a problem. Uh, for the Winston, obviously, but for that Widow, it's going to be really interesting. I know a lot of people opt for Far and Widow here for about the same reason that range damage is a lot harder to deal with for the Bastion than uh, someone like Tracer or uh, or Junkrat. So let's see what they have in store for us here on uh, on this first point hold. Yeah, I, I certainly would hope that shooting someone would be a lot easier if they just stand right in front of the barrel of your gun. But <laughs> coming on offensive, we see Hush on Samra making their way, trying to scout the area, get intel for the team. Almost gets, oh, gets located by Sushi and they're going to collapse. Hush is forced to relocate and that's going to be huge. Hush only able to get 22%, going to 23 on that EMP. 
they're probably banking for a hush to be able to build up that EMP quickly in order to initiate a fight. But so far, Vitamin C is just spamming down the alleyway and not able to let Hush even make their way through. We see Kitty Baka get taken down rather quickly after getting pulled. He gets res by Idiotic Creek. And that's going to have to reset as Comets is making their way into this little cafe here. They're trying to get set and ready. A pull comes through. Ironic gets taken down by Surfy, delaying their their approach. Rez is still offline currently. A hack goes down on creepy trolls on the, from the side of Hush. It's going to be huge because Hush just got a huge... I'm sorry. <clears throat> a huge uh, ult charge on that EMP. But we see just Vitamin C doing what they need to do on this classic bunker composition is holding that choke and making sure that nobody can get through. Kitty Baka comes through. They're going to engage with Valkyrie. This is going to be huge because Valkyrie is basically going to help them sustain. But as we say that, Creepy Trolls pops off in his tank form, making sure to clear the way, getting everybody out. I ironic, ironically, is trying to hippity hop his way back to the spawn as we see Vitamin C getting reset. Yeah, I see uh, a couple glaring issues on the side of the comets that might be uh, overlooked here uh, once the team fight comes through with all these ults. But uh, the Lucio not being able to get a lot of ult charge is definitely hurting them. Here comes that oh! EMP. Foreman, EMP comes through. Normac coming in with that double. Give a bomb. Genji Blade comes through on Savior's side, connecting to two people, initiating the fight, getting the numbers down. Sushi pops Valkyrie to survive, and Kitty Baka is going to go ahead and take the point with Idiotic Creek. Normax trying to get back in mech. Meanwhile, Nomushu still got their mech, and Surfy trying to stall the point. Supercharger goes down. Supercharger gets taken out by Nostrum Room, and Spartus go ahead and pops out his attack visor, cleaning up and making the way through. Devon comes in from Nostromu, trying to spread and clear the point. Creepy Trolls goes ahead and pulls out Tracer, trying to stall. Surfy doing what they can. Huge transcendence comes through, keeping everybody alive. Just touching the point, getting on and off, trying to touch the point and make sure that they don't get a full cap. They got a tick in a quarter, which is what you would think not enough, but... Considering they only have 30 seconds, I think it's going to be enough if they do reconvene for a final good push. Yeah, the, this last push is going to be really difficult for the side of Vitamin C. They had to swap a lot just to get back to points. So uh, having the spawn advantage that Comets have, having the ult advantage that Comets have going into this next fight uh, might make the difference. But we can see anything coming out of this team fight. Ironic initiates the team fight with Soundberry, getting everybody nice and... HP faster up in Surfy comes through. Team fight comes through. Sushi goes down. Savior connecting. Kitty Baka taking down Surfy. A, a DPS and main tank goes down on the side of Vitamin C. Diva Bond comes through. Connecting. Normac connects to two huge picks coming on the side of Vitamin C. Clearing the point. Comets taking point A as they make their way to point B. As stylish as that self-destruct was, it definitely wasn't enough to keep them to the point, but it's awesome to see that they're swapping onto the hog here, so really no harm done. I think the hog's gonna be a lot better for this point, especially with that whole hog ult in this small confined space. Uh, I think having the Hanzo here for that range spam is gonna be even better. Um, but the comp coming out of Comets is very interesting. It's just the, you know, the, the Ryan, Zarya, Lucio, Ana, and they're keeping that Genji there for that potential nano blade once Idiotic Freak gets up to that nano. Yeah, we're just gonna have to hope that Idiotic Freak builds up that nano as quickly as possible. But Genji Blade goes through anyway without the nano. And we see Spartus go ahead and from the side with Tac Visor cleaning up, taking down Idiotic Freak. Making sure to clear the way, but taken down by Hush. Die, die, die. Hush sends out Death Blossom as a warning for anybody trying to come through and stall the point. Comets is definitely gonna take this. 
definite as it might be, they're doing a great job getting onto the point slowly but surely on the side of item C, getting this necessary contest. And the huge stagger advantage they have, Spartus gets takes down Hush, ironic, trying to sustain his team, get with the sound barrier. Bubble goes down on Savior, and Savior taking down Surfy. Their main tank is off, and they're just trying to pick off the back line. Creepy Trolls, unfortunately, gets taken down by Ironic. Grab comes through, Normac purple, and unable to escape. Gets taken down by Nostromo. Nostromo is actually popping off here. Really high charge Zarya is, is scary, whatever side you're on. Sparta's doing what he can, but he can't seem to get that same leeway that he did on the previous map. As we see Comet slowly but surely getting that ticks through and through, but it's still contested. Normac coming in with Whole Hog coming through. Xavier with the Genji Blade trying to clean up. Sushi trying to hang on. Ironic takes down Sushi. Sparta's coming in, trying to do what he can, but he gets taken down by Hush. And what an incredible hold by the side of Vitamin C being able to... Uh, make that point last a lot longer than I initially thought, but uh, the ult usage outside, uh, on the side of the comments was very uh, very easy to follow for us, uh, the thought process, which I'll break down now. Um, they tried to only dedicate one ult per push out of spawn, which is a great idea because when you put yourself in a situation where you get flustered, when everybody uh, is coming out of spawn and, and you feel like you're getting no progress on the point, even though you're so close and that's all you need is that one last tick, if you flub one of those ults, you put yourself at a really big economic disadvantage trying to get uh, stability on that point, which is really what ends up winning that fight. And Comets knew that, saved an ult for every push, like I said, and was able to capitalize on the push, uh, losing 40 seconds from what I initially thought they were going to take at, but took the point nonetheless. So all they have to do here is hold both points, and that'll pick up a map win and even out this series. <laughs> It'll even out the series 1-1 one, one before we go into overtime, kind of leveling out what was expected from the commentators actually on last night's podcast, where um, as far as them talking about the match right now, uh, it, it was between the four uh, commentators on the podcast, it was 3-1, 3-2 in favor of vitamin C, talking about how they really needed to rebound from the fight that they had with Careless Pandas is what, what I'm assuming. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, deserved uh, favoritism, but I think Comets are no slouches. And I'm excited to see this team fight break out and uh, see what they can do here on the defense. Very similar to the one we saw by, uh, uh, by Vitamin C. So let's see how Vitamin C adjusts. Huge Anti comes in to initiate Creepy Trolls not even needing the hack takes down savior immortality field goes down but it seems like the team is going to be extremely spread thin that huge anti off the start in the picks following it definitely made way as kitty baka and the team on comments is going to have to fall back making their way into the hotel but that's just going to give vitamin c free reign to do what they want normac picking away a kitty baka on the diva Immortality Field comes through. Sushi takes it out. Normac popping off on the D.Va, just cleaning up the kills. Making sure nobody takes the point away from Vitamin C. And it seems like that was a lot easier for them to do. Yeah, I think their experience on the team comp defensively and offensively led them to win that team fight. And, uh... It's no surprise that they're coming into this next team fight, which is about to be six ults. So if this, uh, if these six ults are used properly, we might see an immediate take of this point. But it's up to Comets to prove me wrong and show that the the strength of the the Holt hook combo is enough to snuff out these ultimates. We see al almost all six ultimates coming online they're getting ready biding their time hush poking up with the may huge four man emp comes in with the diva bomb to try to open up space as vitamin c is coming back but no shromo sending sending off the 
whole hog. A huge anti comes in. Spartus pops off on that nan nano blade. Blizzard comes through, but Capital coming in with the sound barrier, protecting his team. Idiotic Freak reses on Kitty Baka as they're going to try to sustain here. Creepy Troll is doing what he can. Serby gets taken down. Creepy Trolls falls through, and Capital gets burned alive. Spartus is trying to do what he can on Genji after getting that pick on Idiotic Freak, but it's just not enough. Spartus is going to have to back out. It, uh, as what I said, I think that the ult usage was a little bit too much. They were able to get that initial tick, which is valuable. I will, I will give them that for sure. But what I think should have been done a little bit better was getting, after that EMP, either the immediate attention by the Genji with the Nano Blade uh, to wipe that team out, or just a little bit, a little bit slower of a push. Just take control of the point, get proper positioning, and then let the team come to you, and then use your ults accordingly. Which is might what they be setting up to do here in this next fight. Yeah, we see Sushi go ahead and sets down the barrier, trying to control the corner. Supercharger comes down on the side of Comets to try to push them back, only utilizing the one ult. And it, it seems to be working as Bob comes in and he gets slept initially, but. Vitamin C gets pushed back into the, uh, the corner here of the entire hotel. Hush doing what he can, but he's trapped in a corner by his own wall. Gets taken down by Normac. That's one down on the side of Comets. And Vitamin C is going to see if they can try to initiate on that as Capital puts on speed boost, getting ready to push through. Surfy puts down the shield. Shield battle comes on. Nanoblade comes through, connects, Ironic takes taken down, Blizzard comes down on Hush. Spartus not able to do anything else with that Nanoblade. Surfy and Capital frozen, but they get unthought out and are holding the corner strong with that Orisa shield. Definitely doing what they can to make sure to control only one half of this point. That way they're not so spread thin. Normac is frozen, but he gets back up by Capital. And Hush is frozen in the iceberg. It's Sushi finding the final hit on Hush. Normac coming in with that whole hog, pushing Comets off of the point. Enough for Creepy Trolls to come in with a Dragons, but it's not enough. Ironic goes in with the Transcendence. But it is going to be enough in favor of Vitamin C taking that final tick. Yeah, I think Creepy Trolls and the Hanza there got a... Got, uh... A great pick on the Mercy through the Transcendence, really solidifying that win. Um, I think the patience that Vitamin C had there on that offense, not over-investing when they saw the Bob get pushed in the first time, and then the Bongo, which was a bit of an overult. Um, having that Arisa Bongo active, what you want to do as you, you know the rest of the team when Arisa pops that ult is get as much damage off as you can because that's going to charge your ults that much faster. So by the time that the Bongo was down, there wasn't a lot of damage to be done on the side of vitamin c from comments so everyone was at a little bit of a uh alt disparity and uh knowing that vitamin c took advantage methodically went onto the point took out uh high value targets without taking too much damage anytime they were backed into that same corner they regrouped got everybody back up to full health and uh, didn't force themselves to have to come back into team fight at full health all the way from spawn uh, because they know if they do that, that's going to take a lot longer in comparison to what the Comets had, which was their, their spawn door pretty much right next to where they were holding. So now we're going to be in a weird spot where uh, we only have maybe a push or two by the Comets to really take this point. They're definitely going to have to utilize the speed boost and the EMP, or the, I'm sorry, the Sombra distraction coming through. Translocator comes over the side, but Savior gets taken down by the Spy Diva. And Savior has to push back, but his team is right there. They push through the cafe and they're going low ground, not fighting and contesting and trying to push onto the high ground. Creepy Trolls on Bastion is still up there with the Orisa Shield, trying to pave way, but Comets has a lot of room and natural cover to be able to cover and still take the point as everybody coming through we see almost half the team on vitamin c get taken down that was a very that for me was a very slow but thought out and well-paced push on the side of vitamin c 
I think the pathing there is what won them that team fight. No individual had any really standout performance, but the direction that they took to get to point is what won them that point. And now they're coming in with a huge advantage onto the second point, extremely fast. Yeah, Greg goes ahead and initiates the fight with Rally. The creepy trolls almost gets taken out, but not quite yet. Finding two kills with his tank form, able to connect. Huge EMP coming through, trying to save the point. Surfy gets taken down. Normax still sustaining on point, gets taken out. Sushi trying to get that Riz. Sparta's coming in with Tech Visor, only connecting to one. Capital coming in with Baptiste's Amp Matrix, holding the corner, but not on point. Only touching it every now and then. We got Creepy Trolls now coming in. Hush already with a second rally. As we see, Hush all sadly gets taken down by the supercharged Creepy Trolls. And that should be it. Ooh. They didn't get the second point fully, but it was a great offensive round for the amount of time they were given. So I'll have to give them a lot of props on the side of comments for doing what they did. Um, holding first point on Paris is not as hard as it should be. I think if you play that Orisa Bastion comp a little bit cleaner than they did last time, they might be able to snuff out any approach that Vitamin C have. But uh, if they replicate what they did last time, it could come back to bite them. So changing it up and maybe going for a new comp, it's a little bit less expected than the Orisa Bastion might be in their favor as well. It's really up to their comfort, really, of what, what they think they can pop off the most on uh, hero-wise. And it looks like they're going to go for the Orisa comp, but without the Bastion, which is uh, interesting. I think the Reaper and the McCree are great for that left side of the hold, like in the, the police station. Um, they get a lot of value there with the stun and the close range spam. Um, but what I do see as an issue is that really that's the Zen and the Orisa are the only two that have that choke spam, which is what makes this hold so powerful. So unless they have a, a, a neat strategy that I haven't quite been filled in on, uh, this might be a pretty difficult hold for them. Yeah, they're not going to have the downrange damage in their favor when Vitamin C comes in on the offensive. but. They do have the smaller hitbox characters to be able to rotate around. The creepy Trolls already getting seen and taken out of the invisible Samba form. Bardis trying to engage, comes in, making room for Normac and Capital to come through. Savior has to back off. Everybody on the side of Comets gets taken off of their initial high ground, trying to bounce through. Capital and Creepy Trolls just doing what they can to keep both DPS down. A huge sleep onto Savior, makes way for Capital to be able to escape that initial stun, but he's going to be hush hunted down by Hush. Hush is going for the kill. And he, he and gets it. <laughs> well done. I think that was a very well thought out defense. Uh, they knew that the dive comp was going to be coming in, and I was able to, again, eat my words, that Reaver McCree is great at snuffing out the tank approaches and the approach of the Genji, which has been giving them trouble. So, um... Knowing that, having those switches on deck was a great call, uh, and they should have the ult economy went out this Ooh. next way too. Oh, that stun on Surfy, not able to jump fully onto it. Hush coming in, follows through, gets the kill on Normac, gets d -Mech, and Hush can then also follows through with the Death Blossom. Gets stunned, I'm sorry, Surfy gets stunned and taken down by Kitty Baka as the Nano Boost coming through onto Surfy, hopefully to try to sustain and to get a pick on the little squishier characters, but still not able to succeed. Yeah, what that was able to do though, even though it looked like maybe a flub, what it did was provide Surfy the necessary ult charge to get up to this uh, Primal Rage, which is a great chance for them to get on point and get test for an extended amount of time. Sparta's coming over the left side, distracting and getting everybody's attention. Surfy comes through. EMP, a bomb comes through, Captain Tilt goes down. Nostromo is ha pretty happy with that kill. Primal Rage on Surfy's point comes through. Surfy trying to take the point, manages to get a DMAC on Nostromo. Picks are coming through left and right. Normac gets DMAC, but it's not too much of an issue because Normac is left alone with Spartus, able to back 
them up and now they have the rest of the team half a team coming through to protect Nostromo got back in mech but is gonna have to fight 3v1 gets demeched again coming out and as we'd expect gets killed off by capital getting the demech and the final melee kill as vitamin c is going to go ahead and take first point in overtime 30 seconds left remaining yeah i think the ults on the side of comets are a little stronger here with those two dps ults but um looking like three ults on the side of vitamin c with the uh the diva uh, bomb going in the another blade which have been very potent and the doomfist ult which is a little bit less aggressive of an ult better as an escape but could set up a lot of damage here on a bunker comp Yep, we're g yep, we're gonna see Normac open up with the Diva Bomb. Hush goes in with the Death Blossom, not able to connect to anybody. Gets taken down by Spartus as he initiates again with Blade connecting with two people. Savior coming in with a huge high noon again, taking down Spartus in capital and falling to the hands of Normac. But Nostromo is gonna go ahead and take on Normac, Diva versus Baby Diva. Normac is able to get their mech back in that fight as Sushi takes down Idiotic Creek. Transcendence comes in trying to sustain the creepy uh, comets on point but everybody's getting tossed around by Savior on the Doomfist as we see both teams opt in for the Hammond trying to roll around using the pillar as a swing. So we see Vitamin C sustaining and stalling out really well. Hush goes on to the Pharah as Idiotic Creek's Valkyrie comes online trying to sustain everybody else. Another EMP, I'm sorry, another Diva Bomb comes in from Normac. Catches Ironic in the fray. Capital able to use Sound Barrier. Another huge, all these ults are getting built up. Nostromo with the triple Diva Bomb coming in. Opening way, Comets down three, but Vitamin C down five, down five now. Meteor Strike coming in, trying to find room. Sushi trying to open up with, uh. And a draw, very well done on both sides. I could definitely feel it in, in your voice and I was clenching both of my hands just how drawn out and intense that fight was but i i'd have to give it to both the divas i think their those ults were massive and nostromo has just got a little bit more value in the end with that triple diva kill at the end um it was a great engage though by vitamin c that genji blade did a lot but it's paris and that second point is so hard to like convince and link take so great job by both teams getting that draw um i think it was a very uh, great illustration of what I think is going to is going to come next between these both of these teams. They're very evenly matched. Um, they are a little bit more flexible on the side of comets, but Vitamin C's synergy when it comes to breaking open the fight seems a little cleaner um, and concise. Well, well practiced would be another great way to describe it. Uh, and now we have a chance to go into our 10 minute halftime break, giving both teams and us a little time to recoup, uh, catch a breath, take yeah. a drink. I know after that Paris map, I have a migraine, but <laughs> we go into halftime vitamin C one O and we'll see you after the 10 minute break. Hello and welcome everybody back from halftime. This is Overwatch Tranquility Season 3, the kickoff game between Comets and Vitamin C. Coming back is one nothing in favor of Vitamin C. Guys, your casters, I'm Serge Spade. 
and I'm Juco, and we're going to get right into talking about that first half. If you missed it, like we said, Vitamin C is up 1-0. The second match was the uh, assault match on uh, Paris, and it was a draw, which if anywhere you're going to draw, it's got to be Paris. Um, great holds by both teams. Uh, a lot of all-star performances from the, the off-tank roles of No Remack and No Shromo. And we'll get right into No Shromo while we're there. Uh, that triple ult uh, on that last push uh, was what solidified the draw and uh, was a very powerful play. Uh, do you think it was out of desperation? Just throw, you know, We've all been there. You just got to throw the Diva ult. Or was it patience calculated and just a concise team-winning ult across the board? What do you think? I think it was definitely calculated as far as from what we saw in their positioning. I think that just based off how we saw them positioning around and the initiate, uh, the initiation of the diva bomb was talked through. Yeah, I, I I'm pretty sure they were like, okay, I'm gonna open up a diva bomb, and there we go, and then they, they were off to the races. Uh, it it and for like it was it the diva bomb obviously is always good for zoning, but for it to connect to three people and open it up to essentially be a six v three, that was huge. And very, I I don't think No Shermo expected to get three, maybe one, but that was definitely a huge play. Yeah, I um couldn't have said it better myself. I think uh, coming into Eichenwald, I'm really excited for this first point. Um, there's a lot of defensive options here, especially for Arissa Hogg or Reinhardt comps, which is a lot of what we've been seeing. Um, but uh, getting to snowball on this point can be really easy. If you skip that entire streets phase of this map and get right into the third point with the same comp that you started with, you're very likely to be able to push that all the way to the end. But if you're caught up here in this first point and are kind of playing on the back foot for the rest of the map where the, the time bank isn't really in your favor, you're put into an awkward situation where if you don't have at least an ult two or sometimes even three for each fight, you can find yourself stopping way shorter than you should have uh, just based on how you were playing and more on uh, the game of Overwatch itself, uh, keeping yourself actively considering the time bank and your options uh, on your hero. If you say you're an Ana and you don't have nano boost every fight when your team needs you to, just in these like longer team fights, uh, your team might not end up on top. And that's really frustrating on this first point uh, to have to deal with, not being able to uh, have the utility that your, your team should be able to bring to the table. If you miss a sleep, if you miss any mortality matrix, if you're not able to get that halt hook combo off in time to stop an enemy push, it can get really dicey. So uh, I look forward to being able to see what vitamin C can do here on the defense, but uh, coming out with that goats comp is going to be really strong and maybe really hard to deal with. So we'll have to see what, uh, what vitamin C do to really snuff out this amazingly defining comp. Yeah, Comet's definitely coming in with that ghost to try to push around left side speed boost. Everybody's nice and tight together was, is what you would expect from a ghost comp. And, but very impressive on Vitamin C to just rotate straight onto the high ground above point A to allow everybody to just jump on and off of the point to contest. Picks are coming through left and right, just making sure that the, the initial push from Comets gets punished. Normac and Spartus are going to go ahead and chase up to make sure that they are going back home to where they came from. And that's going to be the push push for That Thomas. was well done, definitely. Uh, keeping control of that high ground, not being afraid to let the enemy team get that extra tick. Uh, the only tick that matters is that last one. So using the resources they have, managing their uh, utility and abilities correctly, and able to snuff out the first push. So here we go into the second push, see if they can yeah. replicate. We see the push now coming on the right side. Uh, Normac coming in with the flank and Roadhog. Uh, Bionate comes in to sustain everybody up. A Chard comes in from Orca, but not able to connect with anybody. Ant Matrix comes on on Capital, trying to sustain. Normac gets the kill on Savior. No Shmo connecting to Nebi. Immortality keeping everybody alive. Orca finds himself at the blunt end of Spartus' hammer and turret. Sound Barrier comes through on Ironic with Molten Core and Supercharger. Trying to make way and keep everybody off of the corner, but Kitty Baka doing what they needed to to get 
everybody off of the high ground. Surfy, Sushi, and Spartans are going to head and take a swan dive off of the cliff and reconnect with their team. Definitely going to have to get 10 points for me for that excellent dive coordination uh, over there off the edge. Um, now, going into this next point, personally, don't think Goats is all that strong here um, if you don't get around this first put, uh, this first turn. Um, they're only leaving one person on point to get around there, so if... Uh, Which is exactly what Vitamin C is expecting as they go around the left side, going straight to point. Shatter comes down on Orca, but it gets blocked. And Grav and Divabon comes out on the side of Comets, connecting to three people after Kitty Baka took down Surfy. And the ch charge comes through, connects, and Normak is caught in the corner by Orca. Strong Rhine play on the side of Orca, being able to spread everybody thin. That was huge. Yeah. That was well done. Um, dropping two tank ultimates there wasn't even that bad, because Ryan's already up to another ult, even though it went right into the shield of Surfy. And uh, here they go, going on this bridge phase, yep. and that pick on the sushi. The bridge phase with the early pick on the Zenyatta is going to be huge. The charge gets canceled out by Brig as they initiate with the rally, sustaining everybody up. But Shatter comes through, connects! Normak and Spartans go down. Normak gets charged up, and Orca is just going to be taking the long way back through the castle as Comet is still pushing three on point, and they make it to the first checkpoint, but only to have Normak come in and stall it out. Spartus comes in, he's using that grab. Normak gets taken out of mech. Everybody comes through. Surfy connects with Idiotic Creek in the back, but still holding through. Nebby on the rig. Sends in Rally along with Sushi popping off Transcendence, only to have everybody trying to fall apart. Grab gets taken down. Normak not able to eat it up. And vitamin C is going to brush everybody off, making sure that on the left, right, center, and top, everybody is just gone. Capital getting that late stagger on Nostromo as Nostromo was trying to make their way past the bridge. Yeah, no remack. Definitely the hero there to get onto the point at the very last second, getting everybody the amount of time they need to get out of spawn, around the corner, and get all their ults off. Enough to give them the team fight. And this is a really hard fight to engage on as goats. There's a lot of ground to cover, so your pathing has to be pretty much perfect to be able to get to the point, use your abilities effectively, and get the team fight started. As you see now with this extended poking phase that they're in, just now getting the bridge. You see? All right, Savior's going to initiate again, built up that rally, and they're going to be swinging around. Shatter gets canceled on Orca. Normak goes ahead and finds a Diva Bomb kill on Idiotic Creek. Surfy cleaning up on Nostromo, and Vitamin C is just going to clean up and get through. Capital getting that huge environmental kill on Savior. And Kitty Baka goes ahead and just takes a, a nice little swim into the river. Yeah, that was a... Now that they have their footing, the ult economy is now on their way after that first push that looked a little dicey. They definitely have a very secure hold of this. And the problem that uh, Comets is having is that every time they push up, the, uh, the payload gets closer, which is actually hurting them a little bit because of how close it gets to the door. Now they have a little piece of cover, which is that payload going towards this bridge phase. Let's see if they use it to their advantage. Yeah, they're definitely using the bridge. Uh, the payload is cover. Kitty Baka initiating with Diva Bomb gets stuck onto that high ground, not able to connect with anybody. Rally comes through by Nevi, sustaining vitamin C as it goes into the team fight. Kitty Baka is doing what they can to spread around, but gets taken out of mech by Capital. Capital always finding that Diva D mech chasing the tanks. <laughs> Capital is just a one-man army coming through, but gets an assistance on Normag taking down Nostromo as the fight gets re-sustained. And Ironic trying to uh, capitalize on that payload, but has to get pushed back with the team as we go in less than 30 seconds. Yeah, Capital here making Eichenwald his playground, just letting letting him run free has not been very good for the Comets. and just displacing everybody in the team. Here comes the grab. Huge six-man grab comes through. Gets shielded, the Diva Bomb trying to find kills, doesn't happen. The savior coming through, Transcendence is cancels out the grab on Nostromo's part, while Nostromo goes ahead and looks back to the bridge trying to cover ground. Savior coming in with the, with the huge 
uh, uh, D-Mech on Normac with the Meteor striking, following up with the kill on Nebi. But Ironic and Capital both flexing their Lucio muscles, getting the environmental kills on the bridge is where you normally see a lot of these environmental kills come through. And as I see that, Nortrum gets taken down. A Shatter comes in last second, but it's not enough. As they get Shatter, but just a moment too late, not being able to touch that point. Capital getting so much done on that bridge phase, letting that Lucio run free there is definitely what bit, uh, bit them in the butt there. Um, and, I mean, the only chance they have now, really, is to get this a lot of time taken off the clock or a complete full hold here on first. Because once they get going on that streets phase, it looks like the way that uh, Vitamin C are playing, they might be able to just breeze right through streets. So, I mean, uh, we might see a very similar bunker comp come out on the side of comets they might run the goats first point which i'm partial to i'll be honest i think goats holds this point really well if you hold initial choke because what that lets you do is if you take the team fight and you lose it you still have enough time getting your spawns in as long as you have that lucio to recontest from the high ground and get a last second push uh onto the point because like i said earlier the only tick that matters is that last one but uh counter to what i'm saying it looks like the bunker comp's gonna come through with the ash as someone who runs a lot of ash in their team i am very partial to ash here love her to death i think she gains so much ult charge off of that uh that dynamite that goes over the top of the uh the orissa shield um and gets bob in usually less than a minute or maybe just a little bit over a minute if you don't get a lot of abilities landing too quickly and ash can really break apart a good goats comp um with the uh, the damage that can't be mitigated very easily by her constant pressure, the bob that gives them another man uh, on the team can't be overlooked, and then uh, her gun is good at close and medium range. So and that's a lot of where Goats is trying to get in your face. So we'll have to see what they do here uh, to get past this bunker comp. We're gonna see Savior definitely gonna try to utilize that gun. Early pick from Ironic onto Spartus. Uh, with that Symmetra pick, Save, uh, Savior on Ash goes ahead and gets hacked, but Nebi is going to find himself killed off in the process as Vitamin C is trying to take left side and the main point, but is being pushed back by Ironic's beam as Ironic is also going to connect to Sushi. And the turrets are just going to be slowing down Vitamin C as they try to make this push. Orca finding the kill on Surfy. Orca had switched off to Lucio. Which is very interesting, but honestly, very refreshing to see that the comments are switching it up. Yeah, I think um, the Symmetra on this defensive push is uh, a great idea. Um, being able to snuff out a lot of the uh, the neat angles you can use to get around the bunker comp with those turrets is what's going to really pay the bills here. But Nebi. More team fights go by. It's close oh, hack goes off on Kitty Baka. Capital goes down. Vitamin C already a man down into this team fight. Capital's gonna have to follow through, but the comments goes ahead and falls back to point, allowing Vitamin C to try to come to them. But they're still behind this giant tower in the middle. Nebi gets caught in the crossfires. Kitty Baka taking that kill, and we see we see idiotic freak send in. The coalescence, but Bob gets sent into Vitamin C's backline, goes ahead and pushes through. But it's going to be Kitty Baka in Nostromo cleaning up those kills that Bob was getting on, uh, chipping away at the health in favor of Vitamin C. I'd say that might have been a little bit of an overall on the side of the comments. It looks like they're only going to have two to three ults coming to this next push. And if you look closely at the comments, all it takes is a few more landed rockets and Fire will be up to ult, and that'll do a great combo with Lucio's and Sombra's ult. Getting a lot of damage, kind of for free. So let's see what they do here with that kind of ult advantage. Spartus on Farah flies over the left side, or the right side, sorry, trying to pick him off and try to get them to fall back to point. Kitty Baka gets an early hack, and Ironic goes down. That is huge. This entire time, Ironic has kind of been carrying the fight. A huge team EMP comes through. Making their way, Normac finding the kill on Nostromo, and Capital being able to find a kill, cleaning up. Savior trying to stall the point, but it doesn't help. Spartus finds the kill, and Spartus is going to be flying through as 
the Comets was actually trying to make their way back to point, but got forced back by that by that Farah. And we see that Farah it has the barrage ready, and I think they're gonna probably try to utilize the barrage for when it comes to this street phase, especially that bridge. Yeah, I think the uh, having that ult conserved on the side of Farah was a great call. Um, it's gonna be a little harder to use it here just because of the McCree up on the high ground, but otherwise than that, the two tank ults are gonna be huge. Supercharger, as you said, Supercharger comes down, but Normer, Nostrum goes ahead and pushes everybody back with whole hog. Ironic, finding the finishing kills as they contest and hold. Right here, Capital Goods taken down too quick. Savior finding a stun on Normac. Normac trying to get away. This choke's gonna be really hard to push through. It's gonna have those Symmetra turrets up on each wall and a late oh. stagger on Afara. Oh, no, Spartus. Boy, you better get back to your team quick. Definitely. I think switching off the Sombra might not have been the best idea onto the Hanzo, but let's see what the Hanzo can do here with this better positioning. Oh, and the hook breaks, and right now we're getting right into this. No, and we see Capital go down again. Spartus sending in the, the barrage, gets Nano, connects the two, but gets taken down. Savior finding that high noon and the turret on ironic side and Savior being able to clean up is huge. Nebi getting that last kill on Savior might have helped if they would have sustained on point. But we have Normax sending in a late whole hog against ganks by Nostromo. But Spartus able to help clean up that kill. We see Capital go ahead and engage this next team fight with Soundberry, but Soundberry comes down on the side of Orca. But we got a three man purple coming in from Sushi, but Sushi gets taken down by Savior up on the the mid ground. We see Surfy getting a lay pick on Savior. They're bouncing around, going around the, the payload. We see Dragons comes through, connecting to Ironic, trying to zone off the payload. Everybody's fighting along, making sure to utilize the payload as cover. But we do know that both Orisa and Hog have the abilities that can knock anybody off onto the Abyss. But Nostromo try to use that, but to no avail, Surfy is able to survive. Savior just picking off Nebi and staying on the high ground. High Noon from behind takes off the support line in the back. Meanwhile, Surfy and Sparta is popping off in the front, but it's not enough. Normek, well, it might be enough, actually. Normek able to find that. Noshimo not able to get the secondary hook. Noshimo gets fallen into the abyss. Ironic is with the Symmetra, gets taken down by Normek. Normek absolutely demolishing it on Roadhog. High noon comes in from Spartus, making sure to zone anybody out, trying to stagger and fall in. Gets a stun. Kitty Baka and Nostromo go ahead and trying to stall onto point as Idiotic Freak comes in with, but it's to no avail. Spartus, Surfy, and Capital finding kills on their counterparts. Savior in mid charge gets a headshot on by Spartus, and that's going to be it. Vitamin C takes the payload all the way to second point. Yeah, that was well done. I um, there was a lot of moments where that team fight felt a little bit forced by the side of Comets. Um, they should have regrouped uh, right after they started to lose on Bridge. Uh, they had a McCree up on the high ground at a couple points, and he uh, dropped off for some fairly reasonable uh, pressure by the side of Vitamin C, getting a lot of uh, damage thrown his way. But there was never really a full recommit to the fight. It was always a five, four, three back on that bridge just trying to stall but having no remac there uh being able to push out so much damage whether it's through the nano boost or the whole hog or just landing those hooks at crucial times it led the way for that that final push onto the door that let them win that fight um i think comets uh played it really well though i don't think it was too convincing of a win it was a, a constant battle of attrition which is what has been the theme of a lot of these uh these games and um definitely down but not out um the potential to come back and um and bring it back here on this next map junker town now uh gotcha well i hear over from uh my producer that technically vitamin c is one seeing as they've uh they've taken two of the five potential maps but of the four that we play 
here, uh, no matter what, if Comets win, it's still a deficit. So uh, we're going to see them win the series. But we're going to see one last map on Junkertown. And this was the one I've actually was the most excited for. So I'm glad that we at least get to play it out. Um, now we're going to do a couple swaps, but I'll let you talk about what makes Junkertown a special uh, payload map in consideration of the game or just specifically within its realm of payload maps because i have a lot i can talk about let's see what you have to say first Serge. aside from it, it takes place in australia mate <laughs> <laughs> aside from that <laughs> uh i think that junker town in you know obviously introduces the hometown of junkrat and uh uh Roadhog in lore in, in its wacky style does provide for a lot of nooks and crannies on both low and high ground for different characters to be able to utilize whenever they're pushing or trying to reconvene with their team if they're on defense. Um, it's something that uh, for first push, a lot of teams run bunker on that uh, little platform, uh, obviously to try to prevent any uh, pirate ship uh, set up onto the payload, being the payload actually being made of gold and treasure, which is really amazing. <laughs> uh, as far as as far as gameplay mechanics for Jungle Town is concerned, I think it's kind of on par with a lot of the other uh, escort maps uh, in my eyes. But uh, for me personally, aesthetically speaking, I think it stands out because of its wacky and rustic nature being kind of just like thrown together. Um, yeah, I mean, like that opinion doesn't really uh, you know, contribute to any kind of predictions or anything, but it's just some, it, it's just a map that I really enjoy. Yeah. I think it opens the door for a lot of different map, uh, like playing with the map. I think that there's uh, certain holes that people like on defense and are a little bit more used to running. I think uh, you can hold really well right on that first high ground with a Symmetra or Maywall to get your team up there, and that can provide some cheeky angles. Um, aside from that, I think Solo Ball is a really good comp here. I know not everybody's used to running that comp, and especially with 222 on the way, um, it's going to be a little awkward uh, to get good at that comp or still practice it, but super fun. Um, to run there because you just have so many damage angles. There's so much room for a DPS player to pop off on this map with all the, uh, the long sight lines of that empty part right before the end of, uh, point one. Um, and, uh, I like widow here. I like Farah here. I think, uh, Hanzo can pop off. Uh, they're very lethal on this map. Um, it's a little hard to run the flanker heroes like Genji or tracer just because of too much free space. You don't have that like little corners to peek around. I yeah. think Ana's really good here. Uh, mm -hmm. Offensively, too, you can run Ana as a, as a DPS character here almost just with all the, the free angles. Um, uh, Lucio is a little bit harder to run here again with all, all the walls towards the end of the point. Uh, yeah. But Zen. Zen here on this point, especially second and third point with all the, uh, the tight corridors, um, can really pop off here. So DPS and support play are really going to make or break this last map and uh, possibly give Comets the... Uh, the one up here uh, in the series, not make it a, a complete 3-0, um, which I'm hoping for. I want a little bit more of uh, visible competition because I've I've seen it personally. But when we when we look back upon the score, we want to be able to um, make it look like uh, it was a close game, which yeah. for us over here it definitely is. Yeah, definitely. When it comes to looking and reflecting. And comparing the the points to the gameplay that we've seen so far, the points, def for sure, does not reflect the amount of back and forth that we've seen from both teams. Both teams have been trading back and forth, huge ultimates and team plays coming on from both sides, uh, which is something that I've stated in every time I've cast is that I always like that you know. Uh, a full hoarded, a full, you know, head to head match, you know, blow by blow, no hits below the belt. Uh, uh, you know, Reinhardt's duking it out, swinging their hammers, but making space for their team as their team makes their way. Uh, different DPS picking their off their counterparts or their their counters uh, from either side. But the supports obviously doing what supports do best in keeping their DPS and their tanks up to keep the team fights rolling and to keep them going. Uh, as it's far from as per, uh, 
a spectator's perspective, the team fights can be a little strenuous. But when you're in, when you're knee deep in that action as a player, it is something really. It's stressful, but it's a good stress. You feel like you're doing something whenever you're helping, getting those assists, getting those solo kills, winning the battles. It, it's really exciting. It's that adrenaline rush. Yes, I've definitely been there before, and I can assure you that when you when you get to that point where you feel that, and if not all your games, most of your games, the game becomes that much more fun to play. So two bunker comps coming out here. We're gonna have to see this more of the attrition war that we've been used to, and I'm excited to see who breaks the fight open first. Yeah, we see Double Sniper coming out on the side of Vitamin C. Savior fighting that early pick on Sushi, and that's gonna be very huge. But Surfy takes out Savior as he tries to make that flank. We see Ironic getting early lead, trying to push off Vitamin C from the high ground. But we see Hush getting dragged into the back line, but able to bounce up to the high ground and meet back to this team onto the payload. Shield is on the payload, but they are definitely pushing it as far as they can. Ironic gets that hook, and that huge five-man yank comes through, but Spartus is only able to connect to Savior. Creepy Trolls gets the final kill on Hush, and Creepy Trolls essentially is covering their bases when it comes to this open area now. That first turn was a lot of those tight corners, whether you want to look at it or not, even though it's an open area, they still had a lot of corners to work with. But when it comes to this turn, uh, Compass is really going to have to commit to sticking to his side to avoid getting hit with this double cyber composition. Because we see both snipers' ults coming online, Creepy Trolls getting that pick on Savior really quick. Spartus sending in a warning ult as eyes comes through on for Creepy Trolls. Normac gets taken out by Noshimo, opening the area up for Comets to be able to push in, but Ironic gets taken down by Spartus. So far, it's been an even trade, player for player, when it comes to this team fight, as they're slowly pushing the point. Both support ults now up on Vitamin C's side. As Savior gets taken down, he's trying to dash in. Spartus gets a nano boost and is going to be finding that headshot, that critical headshot on Kitty Baka as Spartus and the rest of his team takes down Noshiro. Really just picks left and right on the stagger point of view. Ironic goes ahead and tries to stall out, but Spartus finds that Storm Arrow. Interestingly enough, Capital opened up that fight with a Sleep Dark kill on Hush. Which has got to be very satisfying for Capital to be able to kill off someone with essentially is a lullaby. Yeah, especially from the angle that they're taking. I, if you notice, the beginning of this map was controlled by that junk rap play, and as we got into this open area, like you said, that double snipe, sniper just gets more and more lethal. We see Normac gets pulled in, but he's able to escape. Five ults now online for Comets. Wolves come in again. Normac getting that kill on Hush from the side. Capital gets yanked down from the high ground. Able to assist Spartus getting that kill with that mana, with that bio nade. Savior gets hooked and melee killed that 1-2-3 combo from Normac taking down Savior. But the ult economy is going to be crucial coming into this next push as we come in in less than a minute in the time that Com Comets really has been pushing in staggering little by little trying to push the payload but i think it's been this double sniper composition that's been really holding him through creepy trolls initiates the fight with sites supercharger comes in from surfy but no is going to open up with whole hog ironic following up with sound barrier to keep his team up and alive sushi with the battle mercy gets taken down no taking him out hush sending in Rip tire gets a kill on Capital Savior, following through. Kill on Surfy, kill on Creepy Trolls. No Shimo following up on Spartus. And Creepy T and Comets is actually going to be able to follow through as Savior gets that last kill on Normac. Yeah, I think that was uh, mainly due to the fact that the cart had been pushed back so far from. Uh, pushed back super far, but here comes the oh. Genji getting a blade oh. to the back line. Oh my god, that is huge! A huge stagger on Sushi. He's not able to get out with his life, unfortunately. Capital not having it, having Capital's fellow support taken down. 
but Hushed is not able to follow through. He was pushed far ahead and got punished for it. Normac taking that final kill. Nor Normac and Surfy get pulled off from the seal. Spartus fighting that connection on Kitty Baka. As Ironic gets a nap onto the payload, Creep Patrol's feeling she finishing off the kills. As Savior dashes up and tries to escape. Yeah, I think uh, that that Dragon Blade, although flashy on the side of Savior, um, may have been a little mistimed. It definitely it got the kill on the Mercy. It was a great stagger, but now the payload's in a great spot for Arisa Hog to just rain down from this high ground as they try to find the open space to get to the point. And what they're being met with is all this damage. Novermack getting an early kill onto Hush, again with that halt hook. That um, initial kill on Hush is definitely going to help Vitamin C finish off this fight. As Sights comes in, Spartus is going to have an open opportunity to use his dragons, but he opts not to, saving it. As he still has three ults, the three ults still online for Vitamin C as they're holding the high ground. He patrols getting that headshot on Hush. Hush going down again for the start of the fight. Dragons comes in. Spartus sending it out as a warning. Not able to get anybody, but they're zoning. He's zoning people off of the payload. Ironic trying to bounce around. Hippity Hop get on that payload. Normac gets taken down. He's alone, but finds the kill on Ironic as he's making his way back. Creep Patrol takes down Savior as he's dashing away. And we see Comets still being pushed out. Comets gets... Nostromo gets pulled in. Normac able to connect with that headshot with that hook. And we see only Hushed and... What is that? Hushed and Idiotic Freak hiding. Gets that crucial sleep on Normac. Normac still able to help out, get a kill, finishing it off. Nostromo opening up the fight with Whole Hog. Whole Hog not able to come through as Spartus is able to fish it off. A huge blade comes in, but it's to no avail. Gets shut down by Supercharger. Ironic trying to open it up with Sound Barrier. Stall the point, but his Sound Barrier gets taken down and he gets slept and taken down by Surfy. Creepy Troll still aiming down his barrel, making sure that the creepy that Comets isn't able to come in. Always opening the fight with. Oh my god. Wait, Choku, please summarize this. I'm I'm in the throes of the fight. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring it down as best as I can. So, Creepy Trolls, with the outstanding awareness to stay focused on the spawns, was able to take out a lot of the squishier characters as they came through that archway underneath and through the high ground. And what that let uh, the tank line and the support line do was focus on any characters that were slippery enough to get through point. Because usually the uh, the Hanzo or the Widow would land at least one shot, if not a headshot, uh, onto one of the targets going in and letting the tank line deal with the scraps, uh, as I'll say, uh, of the characters that made it through. Made it a lot easier to uh, allocate re not too much resources, but enough resources to kill targets as they came back to the point. As you saw, uh, the Hog was able to really snuff out any approach that uh comets had trying to get around that corner anytime you peek your head out there was a halt or a hook or an arrow just with your name on it so it really hurt the side of the comets not being able to get that full regroup ever it really felt like five five person versus six person fights most of the time um but as we saw um in this initial part once the uh point opens up uh towards the end uh, it gets a lot harder to push. It gets a lot more uh, sniper prevalent, which it looks like Savior and Idiotic Freaking Hush are ready for that with these long range support and DPS characters, while Kitty Baka and Noshroma go back onto that comfort combo of Arisa Hog, and they might be able to do a, a pretty, pretty good hold here if they play it right. They're doing what is not often seen is, oh no, an early pick from both sides, Creepy Trolls gets taken down, but Spartus finds an early kill on Nostromo, and it's Savior getting that headshot on Spartus. As as you said, both sides trying to utilize the barrels and the sight lines of the long-range targets to be able to open up the fights. Early picks, but they're going to try to stall it through. Vitamin C still is very smartly utilizing the back of the payload as an area to hide. Kitty Baka gets yanked in and Normac gets the final kill. Immortality Field gets down and, and Savior taking out Creepy Trolls, opening up the sight lines for Savior. 
to be able to take down any incoming traffic. Capital getting that kill on Ironic. Savior trying to duck. Gets... Get, oh, the kill from the hook gets pulled off of the safety of that ledge right there. We see Hutch trying to take the high ground in place, but it is a very smooth transition from into the first point. Spartus getting that late kill on Hush, opening the way for Surfy to get that connection onto Snowstromo. As we see the DPS from Spartus' side trying to push everybody back with those arrows, launching those... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> launching those school bus sized arrows into the side of Comets, making the way a very smooth transition around. But it seems that Comets is going to try to initiate another team fight around this corner. Sights comes in on the side of Savior. Sparta is going to open up the fight from the back, utilizing the flank. Not able to get any kills, but it opened up the area for Vitamin C to push all the way to the checkpoint, and Vitamin C takes Junkard Town. Well done by the side of Vitamin C. Uh, 3-0 in the way of Vitamin C. A well-fought game by Comets, but the team synergy of Vitamin C just prevails here. They, uh, Like I said, there was never really a lot of resets on the side of the Comets, and they took full advantage of that, and as they should. I think their, their DPS line was very, like I said earlier, was very cognitive of the positioning advantages that they could take on first and second point, and used it to every advantage they can think of that was a phenomenal play vitamin c after that defeat from careless pandas in the preseason comes starting this season three strong with a well-earned three nothing win over comets vitamin c definitely <laughs> setting the bar high in the harmony tier as we start season three man this juco this is crazy yeah, this was a great game to watch. I definitely look forward to next week's game for uh, Comets to be going against Pacified Pythons and then Vitamin C getting that rematch from the preseason tournament onto Careless Pandas. But uh, I'm also looking forward to the next stream that we have, which is uh, Otaku versus Renovadio, which I don't even know if I'm going to be able to see a difference from the level of play. Both of these teams looking like that Discord tier, uh, those players. And um, I think that we can take away a lot here, um, especially someone like myself who hasn't seen a lot of the cast. Players like Capital, Carrying Their Weight, Creepy Trolls, Orca, Kitty Baka, No Remac, uh, uh, Ironic, doing all really well, and then Sushi pulling out in clutch moments on that support role. So definitely GG's to all players, great job. And that about wraps up what I'm able to analyze about this game. That yeah, that this game, all three maps in its entire, all, all four maps. I'm sorry, in its entirety, were it's, it's definitely something to witness and take in. That it was just a real testament to what Harmony Tier has to put up to plate when it comes to competitive play. They might be Harmony, but you could mistake them for a Discord tier team, at least in my eyes. For sure. I, I would agree with that sentiment entirely. Well, that's going to go ahead and wrap up as our teams is sending GGs across the board. Everybody going ahead and take a break for the night. That just about does it. Make sure, again, like Juco said, to stay tuned this upcoming Sunday, the 4th of August at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, Otaku versus Renovadio, uh, the Sunday stream here on Overwatch Tranquility. Everybody, I've been Sergio Spade. I've been Juco. And we will see you next time. Thanks, guys. Experience tranquility.